You know, it was a bit of a no-brainer. The, the movies had done so well. We made seven movies, basically one every year. Every summer I had a break from my other shows and was able to, to do another movie. And we always had so much fun making them. Audiences loved them. It was just like a feel-good movie that, you know, it just made sense. When uh, Army Wives uh, was my last show, when that ended, Hallmark approached me and said, let's turn this into a series. And I was just super excited at the chance because it's a very different character than, I, than I've ever played. And um, just light and fun and, and the fact that my kids can watch it and that adults can watch it and everyone seems to enjoy it and it's not catering to one or the other. It's just a good family show is really nice. And I was just fortunate that uh, Chris Potter, who played her husband, wasn't available. Right. And it also, I think, while he's a fantastic actor and was a very popular character, I think Hallmark was also excited about the opportunity to open things up for Cassie mm -hmm. because she has another love interest who's not in my character, and so then you have some triangle possibilities and a lot different conflict as a single mom with a teenage daughter and different problems, and right. so there's a lot more possibilities. So while obviously they hated to lose Chris, it was fortunate for me and, uh, and also opened up a lot of storylines, I think, for the family. Dr. Sam's a guy who moves in from New York basically to get his son out of the city. He's a single dad, and his son's a little bit of a rebel uh, troublemaker, and he thinks if he can get him out into a smaller, you know, rural setting, it might be better for him, and so that's what he does, and they move into this tiny town of Middleton to be the town doctor after being the successful surgeon in the city. So it's a real fish out of water kind of thing for them, trying to adapt and uh, move in next door to Cassie, and who also has is a single mom with a teenage daughter, so our kids are in school together. And so they have some kind of fun, uh, contentious relationship because he's kind of the arrogant city boy who looks down on the country folk. So they have a fun relationship too. So us being right next door, we run into each other in the driveway all the time, and we're the having yes, and yeah, the mailbox using the mailbox and comparing stories about our, our, you know, trying to raise kids alone. So it gives them something to bond over as well. I always felt if we, if, if and when we turn this into a series, that Cassie had to have some more human elements. She had to be a little more relatable. So she's not always perfect. She doesn't always know everything. Having a teenage daughter is a perfect opportunity for uh, what do, uh, how do I handle this? <laughs> and then this neighbor who this, you know, Western medicine doctor who doesn't believe in my alternative medicine and we clash. And so it's nice because um, it, it just makes it more interesting, I think, to watch weekly as opposed to once a year. Yeah, I always feel like Cassie has those abilities that we have at certain times in our life or we know someone that does, you know, intuition, awareness, uh, you know that when sometimes you think of someone you haven't talked to in a year and then the phone rings and it's them. Well, Cassie has just cultivated that and she has much more of that awareness, I think, than the average person. There's always the tease, you know, there's the, a, a beautiful sort of old gnarled wood uh, broom always in the corner of Cassie's <laughs> kitchen and, and at one point I think they had a smaller broom for, yeah, <laughs> for the daughter as well. Um, yeah, so it's like, well, wait, is she a witch? And just when you think she's not, she does something that makes you go, well, how did she know that? So I, there's definitely something there that we don't ever quite find out. There are not many shows that you can watch with your children or you know, the parents, the grandparents, any age in between and everyone can actually enjoy it. They're either made for children and not fun for grown-ups to watch or they're so dark and so, you know, and I love the dark shows as well, but you don't always feel so good at the end of it. And this is a show where you can watch and get taken on a journey and feel a little bit better at the end of the day. And I think we're lucky because it's rare. Yeah. There are not a lot of people, very few people, doing what Good Witch does. And it's a, it's a need that's largely unmet, mm -hmm. which is, you know, family programming. And you say that and you sometimes people will kind of cringe, like, oh, it's going to be cheesy or maudlin. And it's really not. It's still compelling. And I found and it's shocking how similar this show is to Desperate Housewives. In themes, it's just relatable, like parenting, right. love stories, conflict, divorces, things, daily life that people struggle with, and yet on Good Witch, they're not being horrible to each other. You know, they're just, they're solving the problems in an adult way, but it's all the same issues. So it's, it's really fun to be part of. And there's nothing wrong with feeling good right. at the end of it. And you know at the end of it, it may take two episodes because there'll be a cliffhanger, yes. but you're going to feel good about it. And there's going to be, Cassie is going to find a way to, to improve people's lives. And you, you just know that. And that's really rare in TV.